The Spanish announce table. I believe for the first time ever, and again, we don't fact check here, uh, but it was they Frankie. They said it was. Right. So it was Frankie Kazarian taking on the leader of the inner circle, Chris Jericho. And this had some hijinks to finish it up. Uh, but we did see with the Judas effect, Chris Jericho picking up the victory. Uh, at the end post-match, Chris Jericho, uh, tired of the end fighting, said next week is an ultimatum. Either we figure this shit out or we're done forever. Uh, what say you about the match? And then what do you think about that post-match speech? The match we knew was going to be solid. I mean, Jericho's good at what he does. Kazarian, as we discussed, Fountain of Youth. There's even a YouTube video about it from last week's episode, which you can find on our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. uh, Spanish Announce Tube on the YouTube, SpanishAnnounceTable.net if you need the links. But... Uh, you know, I wasn't expecting a barn burner to borrow a tired cliche, but mm -hmm. uh, I we got a solid match out of that. It, again, it's neat knowing, hey, here's some grizzled veterans who have never found a way in the ring together. Here we go. Here's names that I've loved over the years for various reasons, and here we go. And then the ending, I, that one intrigued me of the like, hey, we're going to figure this out or we're done forever. I don't think we're done forever yet. So... Mm -hmm. Okay. But why would they say that, right? So I could be wrong, all right? I'm like, there's no way, but I'm guessing there's a way, right? Because they're saying it, and they don't say things in pro wrestling for no reason, right? So here we go. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, so first off, I thought the match was was really good. Uh, I uh, like you said. I don't think I'm going to rewatch this match and tell my friends you have to watch Kazarian versus Jericho. But again, they didn't embarrass themselves or yeah. or do anything or, silly. Or you tell your friends, hey, watch this match. That guy Frankie Kazarian, he's 75 years old. Right. Yeah, that would be the only reason I would go back and watch this match. Uh, uh, off the top of my head, I think that's right. Right. We don't fact check, but I think that's I think that's legit. Yeah. I, 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 73. Yeah. I, I think. Ah, you know what? Okay. I'm going to go with it. That feels right. Yeah, right. that feels right. Shave it off right at 73. You, if yep. you're watching the YouTube video, if you're only listening to the audio podcast, you can't see me shaving it off at 73. But if you're watching the YouTube, you see me shaving it off. You know what I mean? Yes. So post-match, the the, the, the ultimatum. The just shears. The, well, you were there a couple weeks ago. Uh, the ultimatum. Yeah. The ultimatum. Uh, I think this is the end of the inner circle. I think... They ran their course. They did the Manitoba Melee. They did the Stadium Stampede match. They've done all of the things that a, that a faction can do. And I think what we can do out of this, because they, they showed, AEW that is, showed that they can tell nuance better than anyone right now in pro wrestling. With True. the Hangman, Adam Page, Facts. Kenny Omega, are they friends? Are they not? Right. So if you do the ultimatum, say this is the end of the end of the inner circle. It comes out that Wardlow and MJF, this was their goal the entire time was to break up the inner circle. They actually never fucking wanted to be in the inner circle. They always wanted to get in and then tear it down from the inside. Then we can have Chris Jericho say, "You rat bastard! How dare you!" And then we get MJF, uh, Chris Jericho, but with some real heat. Well. If you notice when he said that, when he was like, either we're fin or we're done, MJF was like, hmm, like he right. kind of half smiled. And I was like, yeah, Ooh, that was intriguing, so, right? Like he was like, all right, fuck it. I don't give a shit. Right. And so we can tell that story uh, with MJF was trying to tear it down this entire time. And then after the feud, right? So Chris Jericho, let's just say, let's let's fantasy book this real quick. So Chris Jericho comes out on the other end of a feud with MJF where it's not dinners anymore. It's a blood feud. Chris Jericho comes out as the victor. Well, then now he wants to bring back the inner circle, but feelings have been hurt. So maybe Ortiz and Santana don't necessarily want to do round two of the inner circle. And the, that nuance, like they did with Adam Page and Kenny Omega, we can get a few weeks of Chris Jericho babyface this time, saying, let's get the band back together. And the band's like, you know what? I'm kind of great on my uh, solo career. Sammy Guevara says, yeah. I'm the TNT champion now. I don't need the inner circle anymore. I think that's where we're going to go with this storyline. Yeah, I kind of want, like... Uh I, I like what if Sammy turns on Chris and him and MJF go off and they're teamed up. You know what I mean? Like right. something that we're like, oh shit! Like let's get a Russo swerve on this, right? Like let's. Well, if yeah, if anything from this episode told us anything about the future, yeah, Russo I think so. swerve. Can I? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. I'm 
I'm copywriting that. Spanish Downs Table Trademark. There Russo you go. Swerve. So I think, uh, you know, from this episode telling us anything moving forward is that anything can happen in AEW. So that wouldn't be a shocker, right? Uh, but yeah, that's where I, I that's where I think we're going to go with this ultimatum next week. The Spanish announce table.